This is Worthing, in West Sussex. Aside from the alliteration, it isn't that different from other seaside towns. But sometimes, amongst the sounds of crashing waves and cries of seagulls, is another, different kind of cry. This one's bigger, boomier, and a little more British. Spend enough time here and you might notice a flash of royal blue. Or maybe the echoing rings of a bell. That's because Worthing is one of a dwindling list of towns and cities in the UK with an official town crier. Meet Bob. Oh yay! Oh yay! Oh yay! I'm Bob Smitherman and I'm Worthing's official town crier. I headed into town to meet him to see how he and around 200 other people in the UK keep an age-old tradition alive. A former mayor of Worthing, Bob had never planned to become town crier. He kind of discovered the role by accident, after he was cast as town crier in a local play. That was six years ago, and he's filled the position ever since. Town criers is an ancient role in a world long before newspapers and televisions. Town criers were the original newsmen. They were appointed by the court to represent the monarch, um, to represent the government. We were the newsmen for our areas. Um, and if you can imagine a world in which you didn't have all these cars going by and you didn't have any newspapers or you didn't have your smartphone, yeah. town criers were the only way, the population at the time, they were very prominent in the 17th, 18th century, they were able to get the news to their, um, their population. It's hard to go anywhere with Bob without stopping countless times to speak to locals. Good afternoon, how are you? Lovely to see you. He seems to have developed a bit of a fan base here, and on a couple of occasions was even called over for photos with shoppers. Do you think most of your friends and stuff, if you said, who is the town crier, would they know who you're talking about? Yeah? 100%. How does it make you feel when you walk down the street and see all these people oh, that recognise you? Hello! Hello! <laughs> Who wouldn't be amazed? It's just wonderful. Best job in town! Best job in town! As he strolled towards the seafront, turning heads, I accompanied Bob to Worthing Pit. He is hard to miss, thanks to the iconic traditional outfit that has remained more or less unchanged for centuries. He's come to be known by some as the Blue Pirate, but there's more meaning behind the items of clothing than I realised. It's traditional um, 17th, 18th century dress. Um, these are called breeches, um, essentially long, short trousers, I guess. Um, obviously, obviously the, 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 the white long socks, um, obviously the buckled, the buckled shoes, white gloves, um, and then the, 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 the blue tunic, the hat, the hat obviously called the tricorn. Um, because it's got three corners. Um, the, the, we, we opted um, for blue and gold, so we went for the blue and, and gold um, um, real ostrich feathers, and they symbolise the quill, because um, in town crier time, in the 17th, 18th century, town criers are one of the few people that could write, um, and, um, and their ability to write, of course, they give you the quill. So actually, that's why town criers wear the, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the feathers. It, um, our coat of arms, um, this is our, our Worthing coat of arms, and in Latin is ex terra copium e mari la salutem, and that's from the land plenty to the oh, sea okay. hill, oh, where, okay. we are, where we are now. <laughs> this is the ancient and honourable guild town criers, which has town criers from all over the world, um, and we, 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 we join and, we, and we, we proudly wear that. Town crier might be an ancient rock but Bob explained there's still a place for it in 2020. I think, I think the role in 
2020 and going forward is very much as an ambassador for their towns, for their communities, to bring people together, to make people smile as you see today, you know, but, you know, being instantly recognisable, um, a constant figure in people's lives. Obviously, um, many towns like Worthing, they have a, um, a mayor who obviously um, change every year and they're the Queen's representative, but that individual changes every year. Having a town crier in post for a number of years, actually, they're very much the place of an area. But it's a wonderful, wonderful role. It's a wonderful, wonderful tradition. And I really hope it's a tradition that we can keep going because so many traditions have died out in our country over a number of years. And I, and, and I think having the individuals, you know, giving up their time to be town criers on a voluntary role is actually a really important thing to do. Between those who do choose to take up the mantle and continue the tradition, there are even town crying competitions. So what makes a winning cry? I don't know, because I've never won one. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, but I've repeated a couple of them. Um, but, but, but basically it's all about um, um, clarity of voice, clarity of the words, and, um, and, and, and making it sound perfect. And obviously volume, of course, is, is key. Um, but, but, but as well as volume, it's about the clarity of the words as well. But just how loud can a cry get? Bob's never measured his voice, but the world record for the loudest cry is 112.8 decibels. To put that into perspective, that's somewhere between the volume of a power saw and a clap of thunder. Prolonged exposure to 80 decibels can leave you with permanent hearing damage. So yeah, they get pretty loud. There's a lot more to Bob than meets the eye. Although, admittedly, with all the regalia, there's a lot that meets the eye too. I have to admit, I went into this half expecting the role to be a bit of a gimmick, and a little irrelevant in today's world. But Bob is about as active in the community as you can possibly get. The town cry was a constant, visible, um, you know, symbol of the town. Yeah. You know, and uh, which is why I love it. And a quick look on his Facebook page, Worthing Town Crier, reveals that he uses his position to raise awareness for social issues and fundraise for charity. I admired the stamina all that must take, and the fact that it requires a very specific type of person to voluntarily give up their time and fill the role of town crier. And that doesn't seem like something that can be taught. You either are a Bob Smitherman, or you aren't. I think you've got to have a big smile, I think you've got to have a, a, a big personality, um, you've got to have a big set of lungs, um, and a passion. I think probably the most important thing I would say is a passion for your community. I don't think you can do the role justice if you haven't got a real passion for where you live. My, I've got five generations of my family um, that have lived in Worthing, so I think you have to have a passion um, for Worthing, you have to have a big voice, big personality, and, um, and I think that's all you need to be an amazing town crier and an ambassador for your community. After one last proclamation from Bob, I bid farewell to a living part of Worthing's identity. As town criers always sign off, God save the Queen! There you go. <laughs> Before the blue tunic disappeared behind the coats of passers-by and the echoes of the bell faded into the sounds of waves, traffic and seagulls once again. <laughs>